So over the last few weeks, you've been learning how to do quite challenging calculations and to be able to do them in different ways. Then we've had a look at some different example context questions like camping and making teams and so on. Um, well, today we're, we're going to have a look at some different questions and you're going to have to work out if they involve multiplication or they don't involve multiplication. Uh, and it's going to be quite hard to interpret that. Often children feel most comfortable when th there's a question and you know how to answer it. But the challenge now is looking at this example question and thinking, well, what operation does this involve? So lots of deep thinking and it's going to be really useful thinking as well. Uh, let's start unpacking it. So to start off with today, I want to flip back to some of the questions from the independent activity yesterday. Um, so here are two of them. There are 40 eggs. Each egg box holds six eggs. How many egg boxes are needed to hold all the eggs? And then there are 34 eggs. E eggs. Each egg box holds six eggs. How many egg boxes can be filled? So the number of the difference in the number of eggs is six um, but I wonder how it'll differ in terms of the answer to the question uh, pause the video and have a little go okay let's have a little look again um, so the example on the left well there are 40 eggs each egg box holds six eggs um, how many egg boxes do we need in total? Well, we need these six egg boxes to hold 36 eggs. Six, lots of six is 36. And then we need this other, the seventh egg box to hold the last four eggs. So how many boxes are needed? Well, seven. The example on the right, um, each egg box holds six eggs. Um, so we need six egg boxes to hold all the eggs. So how many egg boxes can be filled? Well, the answer is five boxes. So have a look at that. The difference in the number of eggs is just six eggs. And yet the answer is, is a difference of two boxes. Of course, it depends on the amount that we have. But also, is it that we're looking for how many boxes are needed to hold all the eggs? Or is it how many boxes can be filled? Well, yesterday we had a look at lots of different context questions. And we're going to do that today as well. But today's uh, video is titled, Do I Multiply? So the questions we're going to have a look at today, um, you might think it's multiplication um, to certain questions, but it might not be. So you have to really interpret the words and think, well, am I supposed to multiply or not? And that is such a key mathematical skill, understanding different situations and thinking what operation is actually needed. Well, let's have a look at this one to start off with. Saj walks three miles east. Ray walks five miles west. How far apart are Saj and Ray? Which operation is needed this time? Uh, is this addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? Uh, pause the video. What operation is needed? Okay, let's have a look. And I always like to see if I can put a picture to explain. Well, actually, in this case, it, I would actually need an addition because if Saj walks three miles east, and Ray w walks five miles west, then to work out how far apart they are, I'll actually end up adding the, uh, the five and the three. Um, they'll be eight miles apart. Well, what about question B? Kay earns five pounds per hour. She works for three hours. How much does she earn in total? Pause the video. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So Kay, if she earns five pounds an hour and works for three hours, that's five pounds for hour one, hour two, hour three. How much is in total? Well, 15 pounds, of course. This one is a multiplication, five times three. Um, what about this situation here? Tim is three years old, Sam is five years old. When Tim is nine, how old will Sam be? What operation this time? Pause the video. Okay, let's have a look. I tend to find children find this slightly easier if you've got a brother or a sister, um, but one way of showing this one, well, when Tim is three years old, Sam will be five years old. So when Tim is nine, how old will Sam be? Um, well, that difference will keep staying the same. It'll always stay two years, that difference. So actually this one, I'd call this a same difference question. Because each time we go one year on, that difference still remains the same, same difference. So this one really is an addition question. Um, now, what about question D? There are five main meals and three puddings on the menu. How many different meals can be ordered? Oh, how are we going to work out how many different possible meals this time? So pause the video and have a think. A 
Okay, and let's have a look. And for this one, one of the things that I think is interesting is this is a multiplication question, but the picture I would draw is completely different, I would say, to other situations. So let's have a look. Let's say we are, the main meals are pizza, pasta, pie, fish and risotto. And the puddings are cake, ice cream and yoghurt. Now, if you're like any other person I've ever met, the first thing you're probably doing now is thinking, hmm, what would I order? So maybe figure that out first. If, this, if you're at this restaurant, what would you order? And when you've worked that out, let's see if we can see, well, how many combinations could there be? Well, let's say, let's say you did choose the pizza. From the pizza, you could have three different puddings. And so in total, that's three different meals. It's pizza and one of those three puddings. Though if you went for the pasta, then of course there's three puddings as well. Um, so for each main meal, there's then three different possible puddings that, you, that could be had. So in total, and I'll not ask you to count the lines because it looks a little bit like a spider's web, a colourful one. Well, how many lines will there be? There'll be three lines from each main meal going to each pudding. So in total, 15 lines, or if you like, 15 different possible main meals. We call this one a combinations problem. How many different combinations can there be? Now, here's another one. So have a think about this as a different situation. Three glasses fill a bottle, two bottles fill a jug, and six egg cups fill a glass. Okay, so how many egg cups fill a bottle? How many glasses fill a jug? And how many egg cups fill a jug? Pause the video and think about the operations that you'll need to do uh, to, to do this one. Okay, let's have a look. Um, I often find it easier, again, just to kind of draw a picture. So I've got here, this is my little picture of an egg cup, a glass, a bottle and a jug. And put them, putting them first of all in order of size. So how many egg cups to fill a bottle? Well, I'd first of all have to think how many egg cups to fill a glass, that's six, and then three glasses for this bottle. So it's almost like three uh, lots of six. Um, so that's 18. Now, how many glasses to fill a jug? So I've got to go on this kind of leap here. So I've got to think, well, two of the bottles fill the jug and that is, uh, and three glasses fill a bottle. So it's almost here, it, it, it is uh, two lots of, of, of the three, which is six. So how many egg cups fill a jug? Well, this is six egg cups and then three glasses in here. So this is almost like 18 egg cups to fill the, fill the bottle. And then another two lots of that to fill the jug. So how many egg cups in total? 36. And can you see, this one is a scaling up type of multiplication. So we've seen multiplication here, but in all kinds of different situations. Again, such an important mathematical skill is being able to read a worded question and think, well, what am I supposed to do here? Which operation is this? And that's the focus for today. So for task A, I've got these four questions, questions one to four, and I've actually given you the answer. So one of them for each question is the correct answer. Which one? You might even be able to explain what the mistake has been made for the one that isn't the correct answer. So why might someone think it is the correct answer when actually it isn't? So choose which of the answers correct, and also you might be able to explain the mistakes. Um, now, the task B is very different, okay? And so for this one, it's a combinations kind of problem and it's using outfits of clothes. So here we have one example for you of a 24 outfits story. Farmer Tom has three pairs of wellies and eight overalls. He has 24 outfits. So for each pair of wellies, there's eight overalls that he could match them with. So that's three lots of eight. Um, so there is a story for 24 outfits. There's another one, uh, another, another 24 outfits story for Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris has two pairs of trousers, three shirts and four ties. He has 24 possible outfits. Um, now your challenge is this, and I can't wait to see these. Design your own outfits story, okay? Now, it could be, if you want a challenge, you're going to think of a 60 outfits story. But you can make any number of outfits. And again, I would love to build in the outfit stories. I'd love to see them. They'll make me smile. And again, I'd love to use them on future videos. So hopefully they'll give you some really good thinking. Answers are at the bottom. And uh, again, I hope you find this a really good thinking task. 
and I'm going to see you tomorrow.